Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft today released updates for Skype for Business and Team Foundation Server. A little bit odd that these were published today, sort of out of the ordinary. They're only rated as important and moderate. For Skype for Business, it's a spoofing vulnerability. Apparently can then also lead to cross-site scripting. Team Foundation Server, there is one cross-site scripting vulnerability and an information disclosure vulnerability. At this point, no real reason to rush these out. But probably kind of more interesting almost is a vulnerability in SCP, the secure copy command that comes with SSH. Uh, this vulnerability was found by Harry Sintonin of F-Secure. The problem here is that the uh, SCP is actually derived well from good old RCP, an 80s command used back then to transfer files without encryption. And RCP allowed the server to actually specify specify the file name. SCP still does that, the protocol still does that, but the client is supposed to verify that the file being delivered, the name is actually the file name expected. Well, uh, apparently SCP doesn't do a great job with this. Uh, the result is that an attacker running a malicious SCP server could override arbitrary files on the user's system. Interestingly, all major versions of SCP are affected, OpenSSH, PuTTY, as well as WinSCP. There is no patch for PuTTY available at this point. WinSCP has released an update. Now OpenSSH has not released an update as far as I can tell, but you could switch to SFTP in order to avoid this issue. Of course, this is mainly an issue if you are connecting to untrusted SCP or SSH servers. I think it was a few weeks ago that I talked about how an Iranian group apparently has taken over a large number of domains, typically by just guessing passwords or using phishing in order to gain access to respective domain admin consoles. And of course, an other common way how sites are compromised is by accessing any control panels or so being offered by hosting companies that host dedicated servers or, well, for smaller sites, virtual sites uh, on shared servers. Well, it uh, may actually be even easier. Paulus Ubello uh, took a look at the top five hosting companies and essentially found in each one of them trivially exploitable vulnerabilities that could be used to take over arbitrary accounts. Of course, sadly, there isn't really much you can do about this as a user. On the other hand, the vulnerabilities being discussed here in this blog post have apparently already been fixed by affected hosting companies. And Trend Micro took a look at seven different vendors that make industrial remote controls. And these are wireless remote controls that you see, for example, being used in ports to move large cranes that move containers around and the like. Well, it uh, turns out uh, none of the controls they looked at really had any effective security enabled on the protocol being used for the wireless transmission. So it is, for example, fairly straightforward according to Trend Micro to actually do a replay attack. So an attacker in this case would just take a little software-defined radio and record all the transmissions from the radio to the crane and then by basically just visually checking which code does what to the crane, the attacker then later can just replay the commands. But the attacker of course could then also inject their own commands or in some cases even just pair their own remote with the particular device and then have full control over the particular crane. Now, the last attack they looked at was also malicious reprogramming where you actually upload malicious firmware into the devices. Well, uh, probably not really necessary. It sounds much easier to just go directly via the wireless. 
An Oracle today published its quarterly critical patch update or CPU as Oracle calls it and as usual it does uh, fix a large number of vulnerabilities across of course all the different products that Oracle offers. What's sort of interesting is that there are a number of vulnerabilities with a CVSS score of 9.8 so pretty much the highest CVSS score that's out there and most of these vulnerabilities are pretty old actually. There's an Apache Struts 2 vulnerability in the Oracle Communication Policy Management. There are also again a number of Apache Log4j vulnerabilities that are being addressed here and an Apache Commons File Upload vulnerability. So all of these vulnerabilities are well known. Maybe it wasn't really known that these particular products are affected by them. So certainly pay attention and patch. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.